Number 9. Steve Brown In 2018, comedian Steve Brown was performing at a nightclub in Columbia, South Carolina, when audience members noticed a man who seemed to be staring off into space. He then got up, walked toward the stage, jumped over a table and charged at Brown, throwing a bar stool at the comic and hitting him with a microphone stand. Brown took a defensive stance until the attacker ran off stage and disappeared. The entertainer and several audience members were injured by the disgruntled viewer's erratic tantrum. In a viral video of the bizarre ordeal, someone in the audience can be heard saying that it looked like the man was trying to kill Brown. Days after the attack, police arrested the suspect, Marvin Totley, and slapped him with numerous charges, including assault and battery and malicious injury to property. Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott told the state newspaper that Totley was deeply offended by Brown's comedy routine and lost self-control. Shortly before the assault, Brown had targeted Totley in his jokes, wondering why the man had attended the show if he wasn't going to laugh. He told TMZ that Totally appeared to find the performance funny before the remark was made. But, based on his reaction, it appears as though Brown may have been mistaken. Number 8. Travis Scott There was at least an hour left in rapper Travis Scott's Astroworld performance in Houston, Texas late last year, when some audience members noticed people around them showing signs of exhaustion. People were even passing out and undergoing chest compressions. But the concert continued on. Soon enough, two spectators were captured on video begging a camera operator to do something about all the obvious suffering going on in the crowd around them. And still, the show went on. Just minutes later, the Houston Fire Department declared a mass casualty event. Video clips kept appearing on social media, showing concertgoers in obvious medical distress and, in some cases, unresponsive. Despite this, Travis Scott kept performing. Emergency responders quickly became overwhelmed, and a stampede ensued as desperate fans scrambled for safety. Ten people died, and an estimated 5,000 were injured. The deadly disaster left a lot of people wondering why the show didn't end sooner, perhaps at the first signs that people in the audience were miserable. While this and other questions surrounding the needless tragedy went largely unanswered, Scott disappeared from the spotlight for several months. In the meantime, those affected by the chaos filed hundreds of lawsuits in hopes of receiving compensation for their pain and losses. It was recently revealed that this isn't the first time Scott was accused of causing a stampede. In 2019, police ordered the rapper to end a dangerous and uncontrollable concert in Miami. He allegedly ignored these commands and continued to incite the crowd, despite the obvious fact that people were being injured and suffocated, getting into fights, being trampled, and collapsing. A representative for the rapper claimed that these allegations are false and deliberately misrepresented in the lawsuit. They blamed the stampede on a false report of an active shooter and argued that the panic was completely unrelated to Scott's performance. This is just one of the dozens of lawsuits that the hip-hop star will have to answer to, as the tragedies and misfortunes that happened during his concert are increasingly brought under legal scrutiny. Number 7. A Religious Riot After being cancelled for two years due to COVID-19, a religious festival known as Doi Chiri finally commenced recently in the Indian city of Panati, in the state of West Bengal. It probably wasn't a great idea to hold this type of gathering, as the country struggles with torturous record-breaking heat, but it happened anyway. The heat and humidity took their toll on the crowd, leading to a stampede-like fiasco. Three elderly devotees died from suspected heat stroke due to overcrowding and dehydration, while at least a hundred people fell sick. The disastrous mishap brought the fair to an end as authorities investigated, although it was pretty clear that the scorching heat, stifling atmosphere and mass panic were likely to blame. At least a dozen people were rushed to the hospital as a senior police official announced that a heavy law enforcement presence 
had been deployed to the scene, and while nothing could make up for the loss of the three individuals who perished in the melee, Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee reassured the public that the victims' families would receive any kind of help they needed. While it might seem like an obvious and smart choice to just not attend a large gathering during a pandemic and in the oppressive summer heat, Doichiri is a 500-year-old tradition. It's deeply meaningful to its dedicated followers, who were especially excited to attend this year after having the event called off since 2020. So it makes sense that people went to it, even if there were clear dangers involved. It's extremely unfortunate that the gathering ended in suffering and death. Number 6. A Crushing Charity Event Nigeria represents Africa's largest economy. It is here that at least 80 million people live in poverty and often attend Shop for Free charity events that are meant to alleviate their economic struggle. One such event, organized by the King's Assembly Pentecostal Church in the country's southern region, saw visitors showing up as early as 5 o'clock in the morning, even though it didn't start until 9 a.m. They formed a line outside the gate, which somehow broke open, giving way to a large stampede. At least 31 people died, including a pregnant woman and five siblings, and seven individuals were wounded in the hysteria. Authorities secured the area as first responders removed the lifeless bodies from the scene. Medical workers tended to the injured, while dozens of civilians reappeared to offer their help in any way possible. One witness, Christopher Ease, told CBS News that relatives of the stampede victims attacked and injured members of the church that hosted the event. The charity gathering was suspended, so an investigation could be carried out. It reminded some people of other similar tragedies that have occurred in recent years during Shop for Free events. In 2013, 24 people died at an overcrowded church in the state of Anambra and 16 more people were killed the following year when a crowd became unruly during a government job screening event in the capital city of Abuja. Number 5. A Beach Bash Authorities in New England have had their hands full this year with rowdy and uncooperative beach crowds. In one of the latest examples of unruly behavior in large numbers, police in Milford, Connecticut were assaulted by beachgoers who stole their body cams. They were expecting large crowds to come out for Memorial Day and were prepared, or so they thought, with a community policing van. Their goal was to ensure that everyone who turned up for the festivities felt safe and comfortable. But things took a violent turn during the early evening when fistfights started breaking out and a large crowd became too overwhelming for police to handle on their own. Officers did their best to try getting the chaos under control, but it was a losing battle. Civilians began brazenly assaulting the cops, knocking them to the ground and stealing their cameras. In the aftermath of the disturbing violence, the Milford Police Department appealed to the public in a social media post for help identifying some of the suspects who were captured on video harassing the officers. The agency announced its plans to pursue criminal charges against the individuals for theft and other offenses related to the disturbance and encouraged anyone with information to come forward. Number 4. Roadside Riot Innocent festival goers were enjoying a Pride Month event in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho recently. Little did they know, a group of 31 resentful haters were en route to the gathering to cause problems. Thankfully, police had increased their presence during the event and stopped the ill-intending extremists from causing harm to anyone. Officers pulled over a U-Haul and found 31 members of a white supremacist group called Patriot Front inside. They were dressed in khakis, navy blue shirts, beige hats and white balaclavas, covering their faces. They were even armed with riot gear, including a smoke grenade and shin guards. Authorities had found out about the plot ahead of time thanks to a tipster who told them that it looked like a little army was boarding the moving truck in a hotel parking lot. They took swift action to ensure that the group couldn't cause any harm and arrested all 31 participants on the side of the road, handcuffing the suspects with zip ties, removing their masks and loading them into a police van. 
Law enforcement learned that the extremists planned to riot in several areas throughout downtown Coeur d'Alene. They traveled from at least 11 states to partake in the hateful demonstration, including Washington, Oregon, Texas, Utah, Colorado, South Dakota, Illinois, Wyoming, Virginia, and Arkansas, according to Coeur d'Alene Police Chief Lee White. Only one of the rioters was actually from Idaho. Kootenai County Sheriff Bob Norris told local reporters that it appeared as though the suspects did not travel to the area to engage in peaceful activities. The Southern Poverty Law Center's website describes Patriot Front as a white nationalist hate group that was formed in 2017 and focuses heavily on spreading propaganda encouraging the formation of a white ethno-state. In an ominous warning to the public, history professor Thomas Lacac told The Guardian, I know we like to make fun of them, but these people are very, very serious and dangerous. Number three, a dangerous plunge. Former One Direction member Harry Styles was performing in Glasgow, Scotland recently, when a man fell from a third tier balcony into the crowd below. The concert goer was positioned on the club deck when he lost his footing and plunged almost 50 feet, 15 meters to the ground below. Footage of the fall shows the man flailing his arms as he descends toward the ground level audience. Luckily, it appears as though he wasn't seriously injured. While his condition was unclear in the aftermath of the incident, it was evident that he wasn't rushed to the hospital. Paramedics treated him at the scene of the sold-out concert, where some 50,000 spectators had gathered to see Styles perform. A police spokesperson confirmed that someone had fallen from a balcony and received medical care, and that first responders didn't detect any suspicious circumstances. In other words, no foul play was involved. Even though the man was okay, the fall was traumatizing to witness for some people, who took to social media with their concerns over the disturbing sight and their hopes that he was all right. One witness claimed that security saw the fall and failed to take action, while another bystander argued that security staff had responded to the emergency. The situation was evidently dealt with quickly and quietly as the show continued, ensuring minimal distraction from the headlining act. Number two, Taylor Swift. Pop princess Taylor Swift was performing in Edmonton, Canada during her 1989 tour in 2015, when some overly excited audience members nearly knocked her off the stage. Video footage of the near fall that appeared on social media showed that she was in the middle of singing her hit song, Bad Blood, when a man lunged towards her and tried grabbing her leather boot. It's pretty clear, based on the video, that Swift was put off by the attempt. She stopped singing and gave the man a disapproving glare, while a nearby security guard also kept a watchful eye. After the brief pause, the singer resumed the show as if nothing had happened, and focused on keeping her fans entertained. Another video from the concert showed two hyped-up devotees trying to rush towards Swift and being detained by security guards. One embarrassed concert-goer tweeted an apology to the songstress and said that the obnoxious behavior she had to deal with is not typical of Edmontonians. By then, Taylor Swift was no stranger to crazed admirers. In 2014, at a concert in London, a fan actually made it onto the stage and came face to face with the starlet before they were dragged away by security. Swift kept her behavior classy despite the blatant overstepping of boundaries. She didn't mention the incidents on social media and instead posted a photo of herself performing along with a caption about how she was excited to perform a second concert in Edmonton the following evening. Number 1. Lester Chambers Legendary R&B musician Lester Chambers was performing at a blues festival in Hayward, California in 2012 when he dedicated a Curtis Mayfield song, People Get Ready, to Trayvon Martin. Just hours later, George Zimmerman was acquitted in the teen shooting death, leaving some deeply concerning questions about racial justice and equality in America. Chambers, who was 73 years old at the time, told the audience that if Curtis Mayfield were still alive, he'd change the song's lyric 
there's a train a coming to, there's a change a coming. This apparently didn't sit well with one spectator who rushed at the elderly singer and attacked him on stage. She was identified as 43-year-old Dinah Lynn Andrews Potter. A report filed by fellow musician Kurt Crowbar Kangas stated that Potter said something to the effect of, it's all your fault, before she hit Chambers. Kangas went on to say that the police subdued the woman while paramedics took Chambers to the hospital. The victim's son posted a photo of the swollen 8-inch, 20-centimeter scratch and a large bruise that Potter allegedly inflicted on his back. He was left with nerve damage and a bruised rib muscle as a result of the brutal, unprovoked attack. A crowdfunding campaign was started to raise money for Chambers' bills and basic living expenses, since the injury only set him further back after Crooked Records executives cheated him out of royalties, leaving him on a tight fixed income. In the meantime, Potter pleaded no contest to physical elder abuse and was sentenced to five years of probation. Prosecutors agreed to drop a more serious felony charge in exchange for her plea. The judge ordered her to enter a residential treatment facility for mental health and substance abuse issues. Thanks for watching. Would you rather get stuck in a stampede at a music festival or pass out due to exhaustion and extreme heat at your favorite singer's concert? Tell us which one you think would be worse in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.